Okay, thank you very much. Let me try to uh, um, tell you about the very little evidence that is on this field because uh, I was quite very much convinced the same thing, raising the hand right now, that there must be some improvement. And there is, uh, obviously there is also, and I'll show you this. But it's by far not that clear-cut and shown with evidence as you and me may think. We had this before, uh, uh, again, just briefly, the Chad West score, again, this relates to atrial fibrillation. And the point is, in our discussion right now, not to talk about atrial fibrillation. This is clear, clearly understood that anticoagulation then will make a big uh, difference. But what, what happens when we do not have atrial fibrillation? So this enlarged, purely performing left ventricle, where you have this sludge over there, and uh, you, have a, you have sort of a, a um, decision uh, whether or not uh, you should start anticoagulation, yes or no. As I told you before, there is the Wartsev trial, the only one who addressed this, with the absence of atrial fibrillation again. Um, so there is clearly an increased risk for, um, trom uh, for, for stroke and trom trom uh, tromboembolic uh, events. In, heart, in the heart failure population. And this comorbidity, stroke and heart failure, really is a deadly one or a, a very, very grave one. In a nutshell, and I'm not going through all the evidence that we have on the, relative, on the association between heart failure and stroke, but in a nutshell, you can say, once you have a stroke as a heart failure patient, for one, the stroke is more like, uh, you have a higher risk to have a stroke, uh, it's about two to four point four fold higher uh, risk to, to develop a stroke. If you have a stroke, it's more serious, it's more severe. You have a higher mortality and you have a higher adverse outcome if you don't die. <coughs> so your uh, disability level is much higher as a, uh, as a heart failure patient with stroke than <coughs> if you would not have heart failure. And third, the stroke fires back on the heart failure. So if you have a heart failure and suffer a stroke, then this often gives you a huge boost towards decompensation in acute uh, cardiac event that uh, really makes heart failure progression or an acute heart failure uh, um, um, decompensation at this moment. So really, there is a uh, mutual interaction between these two comorbidities with the um, 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 aggravation on both sides. Thank you. With regard to the prevalence of stroke in the heart failure population, that is uh, shown from a number of clinical trials as well as from registries. It's about 10-12% um, of heart failure patients actually have a stroke and live with a stroke. Now, what are the modifying factors? Of course, not all the heart failure population has the same risk. There is a huge range, and it may be from like 4% like uh, uh, or fourfold increase to much higher numbers. Three major factors to increase the uh, risk of stroke are shown here. That is, for one, the severity of heart failure. Second, the duration, so there, obviously there's an accumulating effect. The longer you have heart failure, the more accumulating will be the risk of, of developing a stroke in the course of the disease, and of course, age as well. Just very briefly showing you for each of these three points uh, some, some, some data, as you see here, with different clinical trials from when, uh, NYHA class one to four and a half, you see that uh, the, stroke is, uh, the stroke rate per year is increasing. With regard to the duration, the longer you have heart failure, the higher raises the uh, probability of getting a stroke in the long run. And with regard to age, it's particularly, as we know, a disease of the elderly. Both are heart failure and as well as stroke. You see here again, subdivision for uh, NYHA classes with three age groups below 60, 60 to 75, and above 75 years of age, and you see how the overall level is increasing, but within each age group, again, NYHA classes are related to the severity, uh, to the increased risk of stroke. Having said all that, there is, however, a temporal aspect with regard to stroke incidence in the course of heart failure uh, disease, and this is something that has been shown in several trials, but still is, is for me, to some degree surprising because the highest risk to get a stroke is in the very early phase when the heart failure is diagnosed. Within the first 30 days 
of the diagnosis of heart failure, you have the highest risk to suffer a stroke. This has been shown in several trials. I'll show you only two here. This is the uh, data from the Rotterdam study, 7,500 patients with a stroke, fairly old, and this data has been done prior to the um, ACE inhibitor area. Um, so what you see here is that there is a, in, a tremendous increase in the risk of stroke within the first 30 days, and it levels off and even uh, declines and levels off and even goes beyond, uh, below the normal average. It's not significant, so, but this means at the long term, the risk of stroke would not be elevated in this cohort. However, uh, this has been um, extended, or there's, there's newer data on this, just uh, published uh, last year. Again, this is an even bigger uh, database from the Danish uh, um, um, population um, populational um, 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 database, and what you see here is over a period of, of, of uh, 30 years, 290,000 um, um, stro uh, patients, and what you see again is the same, that there is an increase, a tremendous, a tremendous increase in the risk of stroke in the very early phase, um, whereas it, level, it, it again decreases, but it does not uh, um, um, be totally um, um, lose its, its increases, increased significance. There is still at the long term a higher risk for stroke in these heart failure populations compared to uh, non-heart failure patients. Non there are like four, five other trials saying exactly the same, that the first 30 years, the th first 30 days are the high risk vulnerable phase for those patients to suffer stroke. None of these trials, actually, none of these studies actually explores the, or, or discusses the reason for that. Um, so if, whether this has to be, with, uh, has to, uh, is related to some decompensation or some um, too fast implementation of treatment running these patients dry, it's not discussed, uh, it's just uh, the report of, of, of this time, time course. One explanation that may have a role with a decrease over the long term is, and now we are coming back to the anticoagulation issue, may have to do with the long term effect of anticoagulation. I have shown you that the Wartsev trial was negative. However, having said that, in a more detailed analysis, it was shown that there is indeed uh, in the long term a benefit of warfarin treatment only after four years. Four years of continued treatment with warfarin, those patients started to show some benefit. It was, however, concluded, given the permanent increased risk of bleeding, which was also shown, that this long period of treatment without a benefit was sufficient to say there is no um, um, indication to recommend uh, warfarin treatment for heart failure patients on sinus rhythm. Uh, for the continued treatment. However, in the long term, it may, ha may uh, have a beneficial effect, and maybe this has some impact on um, the decline and the, the improvement of outcome with heart failure long-term treatment. So, in conclusion, what I would like to, to say, uh, I could not find any, any uh, literature to say that beta blocker ACE inhibitor or the heart failure treatment actually improves the risk of stroke, despite we may, we may imagine that there may be a beneficial effect of, of, of this. This had not been, not been tested in clinical trials. Um, we have uh, the fact that risk uh, of stroke is higher within the first 30 days. Um, a consequent therapy of heart failure does not necessarily address only heart failure medication but the comprehensive treatment of these patients may actually uh, uh, reduce the risk of stroke. This means foremost anticoagulative therapy, and again, we have here a clear role for NOACs uh, um, to, to have probably a beneficial effect, even if we have not the AF, the atrial fibrillation cohort, but sinus rhythm. Um, but we need better evidence for this, and for that reason, I think there is an improvement with consequent therapy. This is the pro concept.